I'll tell you guys in the book, the first chapter is, is entitled uh, The Times They Are a Changing. That's Bob Dylan. And it's, it's, I felt that should be the first, channel, the first chapter because it's about environment. The book talks a lot about tactics and a lot about some of the tips and th reads and things, like cues I've seen over my years and I thought were interesting. So it's called The Times They Are a Changing. I talk about what coaches can practically do to do a better job. And, uh, you know, the game's become so sophisticated. The preparation is so good. There's so much available to us in terms of video and tactics and analytics. Um, but you're still dealing with people. You're still trying to create a human environment. And I talk a lot about that in the first chapter. So I, I've tried to, uh, I'm trying in this book, I'm trying as hard as I can to give people food for thought. I think what I, what I tried to do in the book, I've talked about, for example, uh, one chapter chapter on proactive defending you know and people don't people think you got to be proactive offensively I talk about being proactive defensively and I use two examples Chris Chelios and Brad McCrimmon if you ever watch them play they both were guys that used a lot of bluffs a lot of stalls a lot of that kind of stuff to put a little pressure on the puck carrier make them a little nervous and so I talk about things like that I've got a chapter on the talent dilemma how do you coach talent that's not, it's not easy some people think coaching talent is, you know, you want talent, but along with talent, sometimes come other issues. And uh, I also talk about the, when you have talent, um, everybody wonders why you get all the cookies. And you do, you play the power play, you're down a goal, you're going to play. Unfortunately, if you're up two goals and you can't check, you probably won't get those cookies. But everybody wonders about um, why some of the talented players get the break they get. The, the key is the hardest skill in the game is scoring. And so when you have scores, you have to make some room for them to play their game. And early in my career, and Claude's a good example, probably can talk about that. I, I wanted all the players to play 200 feet. I wanted everybody to be real, real complete. And I, that was our goal because we were playing against the Russians with, uh, and they were pretty darn good. But, you know, I don't think I used... Um, sometimes a player's other skills as much as I could have. So I talk about that. The playing coach is the organizer. Every team I've ever coached, I can pick out one or two people that I called organizers. Guys that when the, it was crunch time, uh, something broke down, they were always there. If somebody pinched, the defenseman pinched and uh, he got feathers, the guy was always there. I talk about Dave Tippett. I talk about Igor Larionov being two of the great organizers in the game. Uh, low-profile guys to a certain extent, but I talk about some of those things. Um, I have one here on, I, I really like, it's called, chapter called Apple Pie in the Sky. And then it says, I don't think so. I talk about what's happening in coaching now with small ice games, um, exploration learning for youngsters versus just always tell, 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 because kids can figure things out better than you think they can. But I talk about some of those things uh, in that chapter that I think are really, really uh happening in the game today and i think they are going to work so um so i've got lots of chapters like that i got a chapter on well here's a chapter i got to talk about <laughs> here's a story for you i had a guy named cliff ronning uh, cliff ronning ah, went on to play about 12 or 13 <laughs> that's it 13 years in the nhl but when i got him he, he didn't realize the pass existed okay he always wanted to have to carry the puck. And uh, I remember Don McLaren, a guy who could shoot the puck like 100 miles an hour, played with Cliff. He came out to practice one day with a, a duck decoy stuck on the top of his helmet. And it was to get the point across to Cliff that, you know, you might pass the puck and we could get more done. So I talk about things like that. And I, I've tried, you know, I've tried in the book to uh, provide food for thought, even for guys coaching kids. You know, when you talk about puck hogs, for example, um, players won't pass the puck until they value the pass. They understand what the pass can do. The other thing is, at a young age, five, six, seven, why would a kid ever pass the puck? He hardly has it. He gets it, and you're telling me he has to pass it? I don't think so. So I talk about the, you know, the common sense things in coaching children that I've experienced because I did a lot of hockey skill, hockey school work when I was uh, younger. Defend to attack is the chapter that's, I think, very interesting. I talk about uh, 
you know, offensive zone, zone forward. Strike while the iron is hot. Uh, three is a crowd. Four is a party. Offense sees the moment. So I've got a lot of topics I think are driving up Main Street. Spread them out. That's the use of space. The neutral zone, better safe than sorry. Uh, the space behind the puck. I talk about the evolution of cycling. Um, and I and so I, I've, I've tried to make the first two thirds quite topical and uh, uh, include some stories so people can see where it started and uh, some of those things, Wally. So yeah, I probably could go over a whole chapter with you. And uh, but anyway, that's it. It's it. It's it's, I think it's the best thing I've ever done in hockey is, is the book in terms of trying to help other people out. I think it does do that. Okay. I was just, I was just thinking uh, two things, yep. Dave. Uh, number one, Barry, it sounds like uh, you, you should, if you still have a job tomorrow, fingers <laughs> crossed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should, you should make, you should make Dave's book mandatory reading for all the coaching clinics. Number one, uh, number two, Dave, now you being a true shark, now you're going to have to do an update yeah. the book every every three to three to five years. So you've got another couple of projects ahead of you. Hope I'd like I'm more than glad to be on again anytime. I've done a lot of Zoom stuff, you know, since the work stoppage or since the uh, the the COVID stoppage, and uh, it just amazes me how many times I'm on Zoom calls and those kind of things with other coaches. How there's so many people that uh, love the game and want to. You know, they want to spend a lot of time at it. They're volunteering their time and really enjoying it. So, um, you guys are doing things that the main thing is if you learn things, pass it along, you know. And uh, uh, so, I really give you people a lot of credit. I know the Sharks has been going for a long time and uh, I've heard lots about it, but it was nice to be on and I would be glad to be on again anytime, Wally.